It used to be that when people thought about their health span or their lifespan, they thought of the medical model, which is, well, it's really your doctor's problem. Um, you wait to get sick, you go to the doctor, he or she, generally he was supposed to uh, give you something, prescription surgery that fixed the problem, and somebody else paid for it, or most of it. Um, this doesn't work very well. So the new way is much more in keeping with our, um, our group values of personal responsibility and personal freedom involving self-experimentation, self-tracking, the sort of the quantified self view of the world, um, optimizing, taking responsibility for optimizing your body and your brain. The medical doctors are still useful, but they're more of a resource. It's not their job to determine your health span. And there are, instead of having someone else pay for it, no surprise, we pay for it ourselves. That's how you get good results in the world. So, a lot of the stuff is going to sound health-oriented. Well, it's a continuum. You don't, you, the only path to life extension is through health. So, regardless of where you are on that spectrum right now, you start with maybe average health, you go to good, excellent health. Then you get to what I call extreme health. That's when you get uh, increased longevity, that's where you get actual life extension. So complexity, I, I think this group is above average in being able to handle complexity. A lot of us are perhaps from technical fields, computer fields sometimes, and we think we love complexity. Uh, well, you ain't seen nothing until you start thinking about the human body. That's where complexity uh, really, is, it's just kind of overwhelming, so, um, but we're just gonna take it slow. So what's the goal? Currently, human lifespan is increasing every year um, by about two to three months. And so if we could just get nine or 10 months more, we'd be at breakthrough velocity, at takeoff speed, and we could actually, for every year that went by, you'd get another year. Uh, so that's the, you know, the long-term goal. This is not the goal. I can't understand. People hear the term life extension and uh, they think this is the goal. I don't, this crowd would never make that mistake help me out and spread the word that nobody is in favor of extending this type of life. What's the problem? Well, there's a famous science fiction story called They're Made Out of Meat. It's a wonderful story, I urge you, it's very short, just go on the internet, it's free to read. And it's a, some aliens are commenting and just cannot believe that they have found a species that's made out of meat. And you know what happens to meat over time, it's not pretty. Uh, and then of course there's our computational structures which are made out of a fragile gray pudding. So that should make you nervous. And if you have kids, and if you let your kids hit the soccer ball with their heads, this is a really dumb idea, because it's fragile, this gray pudding, and you want not to do that. All right, so what would be like? We'd like a pill, just a, a simple pill. You take it once a day. As long as you do, you get life extension. And if you ever decide you don't want it, you don't take it anymore. That would be great. We don't have that, and we're not going to get that. Partly because of these people, uh, they're just not on the side of life extension. Um, they, I think their view is once you hit retirement age and you're taking money from Social Security, you're a liability to the world and they would kind of hope that you would just not, not continue because it hurts their budgets. So these are not the folks who are gonna, going to fix this problem. In fact, under Bush, we had uh, the chairman of the Council on Bioethics was actively opposed. He felt that Anyone who even wanted a longer lifespan was uh, showing that they could not be working on any higher purpose and they were narcissistic. So I think you'd be surprised in this room to hear that since the people I know who are interested in life, in life extension and longevity tend to have a lot of causes they are working on and that's part of why they want to stick around. These are the folks who are in favor. Um, the researchers along the bottom, uh, on the right, we've got Aubrey de Grey, who's kind of a life extension visionary and does a lot of work raising funds for longevity and anti-aging research. And his SENS Foundation is definitely worth supporting. Um, surprisingly, on the left, I had no idea when he was in office that Bill Clinton was a life extensionist. He said, we want to live forever and we're getting there. Who knew? Not me. I had no idea he was into this stuff. So, two pathways. There's the biological pathway, and then a more brute force way that uses perhaps nanotechnology to go in and actually do repairs. That would give us programmable medical nanomachines and nanorobots, and someday I, I believe that will happen. 
Here's something from Scientific American, kind of shows how that would work. Cleaning out your arteries, that would be a nano machine. But you know, these things aren't coming soon for sure. Um, so what do we have? We have sort of a sandbag strategy. We have to do incremental things that work now to extend our lifespan so that we can last long enough to spend these, so that some of these um, anti-aging research strategies start to kick in. Well, it takes money and it takes time to do these things personally. Um, if you take it seriously, it's sort of like a major hobby. Uh, it is a major hobby for me. I spend a lot more money than most people would uh, consider uh, average on my health and medical issues, anti-aging issues, and also I spend a lot of time. Um, I, I think it's worth it. So let's talk about your doctor. This guy does not look like a friendly doctor, and that's because your doctor probably isn't your major ally uh, in doing anti-aging, unless you've taken a lot of trouble to get an anti-aging doctor. Uh, that's not what they're trained to do. It's not often an interest. They're overloaded. Um, you can get a good doctor. You have to go out of your way, and you generally have to pay the person cash money. Uh, a lot of these folks do not take insurance. My doctor does not take insurance. So the good news is that there are many things that can help with anti-aging. Um, all the things on this list can help do it. And you notice I put asterisks on almost all of them. It, they can be fun, which is important. If this is going to be a time-consuming hobby for you, it had better be fun. And if you're going to put time and money into this. And uh, a lot of these things are fun. So relationships. It turns out your personal relationships are critical. Your romantic relationship is critical. A good one can extend your life, and a bad one can for sure shorten your life. So think about that. Um, you do not want to go through divorces. That's a real bad for your life extension. Um, and then in terms of other things you can do in terms of mood and stress reduction, um, at the Life Extension Conference last, uh, this past weekend, we heard about the anti-aging benefits of meditation. Now, some of you may be thinking, oh, meditation sounds kind of flaky. Isn't that kind of religious? Forget it. This is not a religious form of meditation. This is, it's just fo learning to focus your mind and attention and relax. Uh, and it turns out to have a huge list of physical benefits and brain benefits. All these, and, and it's, it's such an amazingly long list that you wonder, how is this working? What's the mechanism of this? And it seems to be that it activates the parasympathetic nervous system. And um, they're only now starting to figure out, well, why does this work? We know it works. It's, there's no question about it. The question is why. It's a um, fun and easy thing to do um, and, and cheap. You know, some of the stuff I'm going to talk about is pretty expensive. This is free. Sleeping, totally critical. Um, Turns out you, you, you know, you've got to have those seven to nine hours. It looks like men may need more, like an hour more a night, which is kind of sad for you guys because you know, that's a lot of time out of your life. But um, so what, you know, there are a lot of tricks to getting better sleep. Most people say try to go to bed earlier. Now, again, not what we really want to hear. A very dark bedroom seems to be important. Uh, that's how you get melatonin release. That's how you get your cortisol down. And, um, Light at night is a bad idea. So actually, I met a, a, a young and, and very cool life extensionist at a party, actually at Patry Friedman's house. And this guy, because it was an evening party, he had red glasses on. It turns out blue light is a problem. Uh, so in the evening, you want red light. So this guy, that's what happened. This is the kind of thing you get into if you get serious about this stuff. Your DNA. Now, you may be thinking, well, my DNA isn't so hot. You know, all my relatives die young. Or you may be thinking, oh, my relatives live a really long time. I can afford to eat at McDonald's. Forget it. You have a decent amount of control over turning on and off certain genes. They did a study over about three months of certain lifestyle manipulations that you can do. And they changed the activity of 500 genes, and, uh, including inflammation, which is a critical one for life extension. So what does that mean? Your DNA, you know, it's not really true that your DNA is your destiny, at least when it comes to health and longevity. You have more control than you think. So how do you figure what's going on in your body? This is what I would love to have. This is a dermal display concept for the long-term future from uh, Robert Freitas and uh, animated by uh, Gina Miller. You can see this online at YouTube if you type in dermal display. It's, it's a wonderful little film, but we don't I want this. We don't have this. Instead, we have gadgets and testing 
This is the Fitbit. Um, I don't have a Fitbit yet, but I guess I should get one because it is awesome, an awesome little device. It tracks all kinds of things you need to know about your life extension, um, including your activity level and also um, some rudimentary things about your sleep. Uh, and you can get this thing, and you know, the data I think you can port to the Fitbit company and they'll send you back all these analyses. It's, and it's pretty cheap. But really, if you want to know what's going on with your, life, with your body, you've got to do some serious testing. Um, you've got to do some extensive blood testing. I have get mine done at the Kronos, long, uh, the Kronos long, uh, Longitudinal Aging Study. It's pretty pricey. Uh, if you want to spend a little less money, you can get a really a lot amount of data from the, the test uh, that you can order online from the Life Extension Foundation. And you don't even need a doctor's order for those. You can just order them, do whatever you want. You know, get the data you want, analyze it yourself. Um, but you must find out. And here's a key thing. You may think, oh, my doctor does blood tests. I don't need to do these extra tests. Well, first of all, they don't test enough things by like a couple orders of magnitude. And secondly, if you've seen those ranges that they show you, the, the ranges that are the normal ranges on your blood test, well, those, those are, quote, normal, and they're really broad. In other words, these aren't optimal. You know, all that means is you're not dead, pretty much, or that you don't have, you're not, you know, you're not about to die from a deadly disease. These are not optimal. You have to find out what are the ranges for optimality and then tweak, try to tweak whatever you can do, either through supplements or eating or whatever, exercise, to get into the optimal range. And I've seen the differences. Sometimes the range is you want it lower, higher, sometimes just tighter on both ends. This is non-trivial. Supplements are one of my favorite things to talk about for life extension, not because they work so well all the time, but because they're so easy. You pop a pill. That would be great if that would do the job. Uh, and they can help. Um, I take, if you have a meal with me, you'll see me. I take a lot of supplements. Um, the challenge, of course, is what to take. And it is hard to figure out. Um, for some supplements, there's a lot of data, and you can be pretty confident about it, like fish oil, vitamin D, things like that. All, everybody in this room should probably be taking vitamin D. If you take nothing else away from this talk, is that you all, it's like 99.9% .9 you should be taking vitamin D. And the reason for that is we don't get enough sunlight. You cannot fix it with diet in general. You've got to take a supplement, unless you're like a lifeguard. I mean, like this gentleman here with the no clothes and he's all brown, maybe he doesn't need vitamin D, but he's probably the only one in the room. Um, my, one of my doctors tests all her patients. She says every single one is low. So take vitamin D, end of discussion, you know, if you take just that away, away today, you will be doing well. But supplements can cause problems. Um, they can conflict with each other. They can make it very hard to tell what's going on. If you take too many, you know, you add a new one and who knows what's going on. It's, it's just very hard to tell. Um, they can be additive and all push you in one direction. I've been pulled away from certain supplements by my own doctor who says, whoa, everything you're taking is thin in your blood here. This is too much. You're going to get a bleeding stroke at this rate. So you need ad expert advice if you're going to do this. Um, a word to the wise. Now, you get a lot of stuff in the media about life extension. You know, medical studies take, you know, take this, take green tea. You know, this helps. This hurts you. A lot of those studies, first of all, the, the media has a lot of trouble reporting these things clearly. Generally, they get it wrong. And a lot of the studies are poorly designed. Either they rely on patient-reported data. And one thing that happens all the time is they mistake correlation for causation. Like they'll say, oh, you know, eat broccoli and you live 10 to twice as long. And it turns out, well, people who eat that much broccoli, they eat a lot of other good things. And they exercise. And they don't smoke, right? So which one was it? Um, it takes some real attention to try to tease these things apart. So the stuff in the media, what those things do is they tell you things to look into. You can't just go by what the media says. And so, sadly, you can't always just go by what even a medical research report says. So, so back to supplements. Um, who recommends what kind of supplements? This is a list from those who recommend the fewest to those who recommend the most. And I wish I could tell you that this was a list from conservative to radical, but that's not the case. We don't know. The whole question here is what is conservative? We're trying to conserve your body, conserve the useful structure of your body. Where is the conservative level? That's the challenge here. Um, if you don't know what to do and you're a beginner, you know, pick something in the middle, like Consumer Lab or Kronos, you can't really go wrong. 
If you're feeling a little more ambitious, you can ramp it up to uh, the Kurzweil and Grossman book. Um, and then from there on, it gets more and more in terms of what you're taking. Life Extension Foundation has a top 10 they recommend. You know, you could do a lot worse than just do that. So you want to get tested. You want to watch out for additive effects. If you're going to take human hormones or things that affect your hormone levels, you must be careful. You know, we're lucky in the U.S. We can get these things over the counter, but it means you are responsible. Nobody's watching what you're doing. And I, I know that that can be an issue because um, um, I kind of overdid it myself at one point. Where's my water? Thanks. So, uh, like melatonin is a hormone and it seems pretty safe. Pregnenolone leads to the sex hormones and you can, you can overdo that. And um, so I wanted a mnemo uh, mnemonic to help you remember that hormones can be risky. You know, I don't want you to go home and say, did she say it was minerals, it was vitamins, what was it that was risky? Okay, hormones can be risky. You got that? I thought that would help you remember. All right, hormones can be risky. I'm serious. Don't, don't make any mistakes on that. Okay, who gets to decide what, what substances you can buy over the counter? Well, it's, of course, our federal government gets to decide. And that's a problem because periodically there are attacks on your right to take the supplements you want. Not only that, they're even attacking your right to find out what's, what your DNA says. This, this is just information. It's not even a chemical. And yet two companies have backed off now from, from providing that information to you because of feeling that regulation is coming from the federal government. I feel we need a lobby. Uh, I'm trying to get it started. If you're interested in either participating or in funding it, let me know. <coughs> but my friends in Europe and my friends in Canada cannot get the supplements they want. We have to be careful. The last attack on this came from John McCain, so keep an eye on this. If you get an email saying you need, that we need to contact our Congress people, take action. You know, supplements are great, but it, it, the fact is that we don't really know what's going on very well. <clears throat> we do know what helps, which is apparently if you just choke down as much vegetables as you can manage of different colors, you're going to do so well. I mean, it's just um, the reason that matters is that the, co the colors are from the chemicals in, the, in this stuff, and it's these these different chemicals are, are good for you. So we don't always understand the mechanisms, but it's very clear. You want to have a lot of different colors. You want more ve as many vegetables as you can choke down, pretty much, without getting you know over over full. So calorie restriction. You've probably heard yes. What about fruits? Or fruits? What about what? Fruits. 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 Um, generally, what's in fruits is also in vegetables, and with fruits you're getting some sugar, and sugar is really bad for you. That said, I think berries look like a win. Um, I'm not willing to say to people they shouldn't eat fruit. I eat fruit. So I'm not sure about fruit. I know vegetables are, are good. So fruit in moderation, perhaps. If it can, especially if it can get rid of cakes and cookies for you, that's great. Calorie restriction. Very hard to do. It looks, calorie restriction looks like it really does slow down aging, at least in primates. These, I don't know if you've seen the photographs of these primate experiments, but these primates on calorie restriction, you put them next, a picture next to the ones who are taking a regular diet, it is dramatic, okay? However, can any of us actually reduce our calories by about a third successfully over the long term? It's not easy to do. At the conference last week and called Personalized Life Extension at lifeextensionconference.com, you can see it. We had a number of discussions on this. Turns out there's something called intermittent fasting, where you don't try to do calorie restriction all the time. You just do it periodically, and you can get a lot of the benefits that way. And this is much more doable for most people. So intermittent fasting is worth considering. Um, normal people do succeed at this. You've heard uh, red wine is good for you. You may have heard that resveratrol is an interesting supplement. Um, I think that's probably true. I take resveratrol. Um, they're working on other, uh, the reason they think it works is it's like a calorie restriction mimic, and that's what we want. We don't want to actually have to restrict our calories, right? That's hard to do. We want to mimic, and, and um, resveratrol may be that. Um, uh, so I, I think it's worth taking. There's also, I'm going to back up here one. There's also, um, here we go. So 
These are our chromosomes. We talked about DNA. The white spots on the ends, those are your telomeres. Probably you've heard of telomeres. They're like the, um, sh they're like the cap on a shoestring right on the end. Every time your cell divides, those things get shorter. When you run out of that, the cell can't divide anymore, and you age and die. So how do we preserve these things? Well, there are substances that help. There's, um, there's a commercially available one called TA65 that's based on a natural product, so it's over the counter. It used to cost a huge amount of money per year, like $14,000, but the main telomere researcher that I think is the best, he takes it. And this is not a rich man, so that tells me something, right? But the good news is they lowered the price. I don't have the new price on it, but it's come way down. So if you're interested, um, TA65 is the product. And um, so I, I think it's worth looking into now that the price has come down to something more reasonable. Oh, another thing about your telomeres. If you don't want to spend the money, the way you can protect your telomeres is by reducing the stress in your life. Uh, chronic stress, negative stress shortens your telomeres dramatically. So that's another thing to do. You know, this business about stress is absolutely critical. You've just got to get out of that, those situations. Whether it means shortening your commute or divorcing your spouse or getting a new boss or whatever, you know, meditation is an easy one. Something, you know, you've, you've just got to cut that out. I know we're, a lot of us, I'm from the Bay Area, people in Silicon Valley are all proud of how much stress they have in their lives because they're working so hard and that makes them really cool. Forget it, they're just killing themselves. Okay, stem cells, wonderful research. This is, this is gonna be so important to you over the next couple decades as these things come online. Um, this is gonna be dramatic. Right now, it's very hard to get. Uh, unless you happen to have like a bad knee, there are people who are treating bad knees with stem cells and having great results. This is just the beginning. Um, watch for stem cells. This is the kind of thing that we have to, um, we have to continue if we really wanna nail the aging problem. So. Inflammation is a huge issue. You've probably heard that belly fat is a problem for some reason. Maybe you weren't clear about what is the issue. The issue is inflammation. Um, many things in your body cause inflammation, um, injuries, um, infections, allergies, and the belly fat. If, it is, if, if you have trouble with fat on your belly, I sympathize. I had a big issue too, and, and you know, with enough work, I was able to get rid of that. Most people, if you work at it, you can. Not everybody. Um, so, I'll tell you what hardcore life extension people do. Um, one of the big issues for inflammation is um, in your mouth. Yeah, your gums are an issue. So, many of us sort of, they don't think too much about it. If you're serious about life extension, number one, you work on that. And number two, your dental hygienist should rave about you. You should go in and be like this rock star at the dentist. They go, oh my God, you're so good. You, tell, you do what we tell you to do and your gums are great. That's what happens when I go in. That's what should happen when you go in. And if you're really serious, which I haven't gone this far, some of my life extension friends actually go more often to the dentist than you know, you're supposed to. You're supposed to go twice a year. They go three times or four times a year voluntarily to the dentist. Now that is serious life extension. Okay, gym class. Moving around, you've got to move your body. And I, you know, if you went to public school as I did, they make you go out, you know, get form teams and throw balls around. And this is what you think uh, exercise is about and it just ruined me for exercise for a few decades. So, it, you know, the public schools have a lot to answer for in terms of, of taking people like me and making us hate exercise. So how do you make it fun? Well, both these people here at the gym, you notice who they're with? They're with these hot trainers. <laughs> you, know, you've, you know, you've heard of personal trainers and you may think, oh, they're to make you work hard. Well, the, I go to a gym all the time and the personal trainers I see, almost all of them are amusing and entertaining their clients while they work out. So it's a social thing. They're, they're chatting, they're schmoozing. It helps you make, not notice the fact that you're sweating and, um, and you have a good time. So uh, very few of the trainers I see are, are all business. There's a lot of fun stuff going on there. And the goal is to have fun. The brain, the brain is what it's all about. That's where these, you know, aging shows up. Uh, it's a great way to measure how you're doing. If you, all you, you can even do this yourself. Just do simple mental exercises and time yourself over time and see How's your brain doing as you're making these changes in your life? Is your brain getting better or is your brain getting worse? Um, so a lot of this is really about how well your brain is functioning. You know, these supplements help, are supposed to help your brain. Someday we'll be able to upload the brain 
to, uh, this is another science fiction thing, to silicon so that, um, and I, you know, before you poo poo it, I know, a, I have, I know a very determined young researcher and I would not bet against this guy. So someday I hope this happens. Meanwhile, let's say you end up like that poor lady in the bed, you know, you're out of options. They're about to pull the plug. The doctors are not helping anymore. They're not interested. Well, you have one last option. You still have this one, which is there is suspended animation, experimental services available. Um, they used to just freeze people in the olden days. Um, now that's not the thing. Now they do something called vitrification, which uh, actually does, is not forming ice crystals. So, you know, this is what happens if you, if you run out of other things that are working for you. Um, and I think depending on, you know, for the very young people in the audience, you may never need to think about this. Um, unless you get hit by a truck. But uh, for anybody my age or older, well, you're not, you know, you may need to use this. And so I'm signed up, my mom is signed up. You know, it's, 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 not, it's not that expensive. So that's it. Um, I'm thrilled to see so many of you are interested in this topic. I'm happy to answer questions. You can reach me through lifeextensionconference.com, which is we just had our, our big conference this last weekend, so you kind of missed that. Uh, but I hope to do it again. So if you want to get on that email list, just email to me at that website. Um, you can read about the nanotechnology side of uh, life extension at foresight.org. And I thank you for attention and hope to see you at Libertopia 2050. Thank you. <laughs>the question is of hormones in, in meat that we eat. Um, you know, I would be, I'm a little leery, I'm a little nervous about that. I don't know for sure. Um, I do know that I only eat, gra I try very hard to only eat grass-fed beef, um, but that, um, that's sort of for other reasons. I think in general, um, it's better to try to eat food that, that you really understand what's in it. Um, I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not a purist on that. At my conference, we had Bruce Ames speak. He's a very respected researcher at Berkeley. Uh, and his view is that you don't need to eat organic vegetables. He doesn't think it's important in terms, I mean, it may be important for the environment, but he feels it's not important for health reasons. So I'm not sure about that. I, you know, when in doubt, I kind of err on the side of conservatism. Yes, David in the back. With regard to exercise, surely an alternative Absolutely. Absolutely. David is saying, you, you, you know, why don't you just find something that you enjoy? And that is definitely the thing. Um, you know, if a trainer is what it, for me, I had a trainer for a while and that really helped me sort of get, you know, eventually your body kind of gets addicted to exercise. Probably some of you are nodding because you know what I'm talking about. But until you get into that stage, you need some little oomph. And, and it could be enjoyment, as, as David is pointing out. Or, and or a personal trainer. What I did is I got a workout partner and a personal trainer. I needed a lot of help. Um, but yes, yeah, something that you enjoy. Um, the thing is you need, you need to do aerobics, you need to do weight training as well. Um, at the end of your workouts you need to stretch. Uh, older people need to do balance. Yes, sir. You're asking whether uh, the energy drinks in increase your serotonin. <coughs> Do they increase your serotonin level? You know, I'm not sure about that. And, and um, one thing to keep in mind is that more serotonin, you know, we think of serotonin as the happy chemical. More serotonin isn't always better. Um, one thing to watch on those energy drinks is, is there sugar in there? If there's sugar in there, there's no sugar. Okay, that's good. Watch out for the ones that have sugar. Those are just nasty. Yes, at the bookstore. Um, on the serotonin thing, my dad had a medical treatment that depressed his body to a serotonin level rather than when the treatment stopped, he couldn't sleep. <laughs> but uh, my question is, um, uh, which, um, can, can we find uh, some information, where can we find some information on the studies that have been done on the uh, life extension, uh, like uh, clinical studies and trials? 
Well, that's a big question. Um, what, I'll tell you what I want to do. We just covered all this stuff at, at this big conference last weekend, and it was overwhelming in the volume of information. So <clears throat> the first thing I want to do, well, first I need to DVDs and make it so they're available so that people can get the conference information, even in its overwhelming form. So then you have the raw data. Next, I want to build a database so that, you know, you could go online and you could type in serotonin or people with questions about specific things could type that in and get, and get the actual references that for, for the studies that cover these things. So, so that, that's also be available through your website? Well, someday. I mean, I need a lot of help on that. So um, either, either people want to do the coding or people want to fund it. Yes, sir? Um, okay, I'm a little bit late. I just wanted to ask your opinion on uh, purely vegetarian or vegan diets uh, and if, if they're unhealthy in any ways. That's a really interesting question. Um, that's a huge debate among my friends because we have two crowds. There's the vegetarian vegan crowd and the paleo crowd. So these people disagree 100% on what people should eat. And we had a very interesting talk by one of our speakers who theorized that, um, you know, we've only been an agricultural species for like 10,000 years. And um, he pointed out that um, up until the age of reproduction, you know, nature is still selecting for new genes. But after that, nature doesn't care that much about you. And um, his attitude was, gee, maybe after reproductive age, you should switch over to a paleo diet, because that is what we ate in the olden times. And those genes haven't been evolving as fast. I thought it was a very interesting point. I've, it's a very speculative point. Um, I person, what, here's a key thing. This is very simple. Um, the non-technical people call it, listen to your body. And the technical people say, they put it another way, they say, your body gives out analog signals that you can learn to turn into digital signals and record and learn from. So I'm more on the second side. But the point is, if you try different diets, pay attention to how you feel. Odds, you know, if you feel better on one, probably there's something good going on. Um, oh, wait, you've been waiting. Uh, what would you say about uh, sugar substitutes like uh, aspartame or sucralose or xylitol? Right, that's a tricky one. The, um, the one that I use is stevia. That's the one I prefer. It's in a little, um, when, you go to, when you go to really good restaurants, you know how there are the different colors? There's the pink ones and the yellow ones and the green ones and the blue ones. These are the green ones, and only really good restaurants have the green ones. Um, if you can't get the green ones, then um, just, I've heard you should avoid the blue ones. And I think that is, which one is the blue one? Aspartame. Aspartame. I've heard you should avoid it. I'm not an expert on this. I try to use stevia. You can carry little packages of it around. I have been going over here, so let's. Hmm? Don't know much about xylitol. I, I don't know much about it. Who's been waiting over here? Anybody? Yes? I just had a question about statistics on life expectancy. And I've heard all my life that in 1900, the average life expectancy was 47, yeah, yeah, and how it's gone up, and that's wonderful. However, um, I don't think that statistic accounts for things like uh, deaths of women in childbirth, young women, or infant mortality. Um, so how can we really trust those statistics? I think those numbers are correct, but the problem is, I think what you're pointing at, is that those numbers include things like infant mortality and women dying in childbirth, which pulls the average way down. So yes, we've, yeah, those two problems we're doing pretty well on, but it doesn't mean that the maximum lifespan has increased by that much. I'm not sure what the, how the maximum life, I mean, you know people used, to, there were people who made it into their 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s in the olden times, and, and I'm not sure you know, if you throw out infant mortality and maternal death, what are those numbers? Well, it, I think it has improved, but, I, you know, they say it's still improving by two to three months a year. So we're still making progress. Maybe not as dramatic as it sounds when you play, when you do use those numbers. They had a question in the way in the back. Yes, ma'am. It's an issue, and, and, and we, did t we did talk about supplements, and it is a problem. Um, I don't have any better suggestions than to try to go with big name brands that you've heard of before, and I go to a certain store where I feel they have very high standards. Um, I don't have an easy answer for that. Oh, consumerlab.com. Yes, I see someone mentioning that. Consumerlab.com. 
um, does testing of supplements and you can go there and they will tell you what they find in certain brands. They actually go down to the brand level. So Consumer Lab is definitely worth, yes sir, you're... Say, speak loudly. Okay, so there's one is consumerlab.com, the other one is pharmacy, pharmacychecker.com. This, and, and back to our theme of freedom, human freedom. Remember, you know, there are other countries in the world. You don't have to, you can move around and go somewhere else. You can do medical tourism. You can go elsewhere for your requirements. Um, you are allowed to bring uh, things for personal use generally into the U.S. and you can have work done overseas. So just because something is not allowed here doesn't necessarily mean that you can't get it somewhere else where they're a little more uh, open to new ideas. Uh, yes, sir. Is there anything to eating for your blood type? Uh, eat, the question is about eating for your blood type. You know, I, I don't know for sure. I haven't heard anything really positive about it, but on the other hand, it's not a crazy idea. Um, I mean, we, the, it is true, uh, the question about, you know, we are biochemically different. There is biochemical individuality. What works for one person can be very different for another. So um, I'm not willing to write that off, even though I haven't really heard anything that positive about it. That does, I, I do know, I mean, if you just look at ethnicity, uh, people, you know, there are real medical differences between ethnicities. I mean, and even among, even within uh, one ethnic group, uh, my people are from northern, northern Europe, and I seem to respond differently to salt. Um, I, that could be because they all ate salted fish for centuries. I mean, that was what they ate. So it's not surprising that I'm responding differently to salt. So people do vary. I can't rule out that the blood type thing is wrong. I, or maybe right, maybe wrong. Don't know. Yes, ma'am. Uh, when you're getting your blood tested, what are the top things that you think you should look out for? Okay. Most important blood tests. That's a tough one. Um, if I were new to this and I had no, and I were, maybe didn't want to spend much money on it, um, what I might do is go to the Life Extension Foundation website and look at the tests they offer there and start with the basic ones because that's the cheapest way to go and they do think about this stuff. Uh, and money is an issue when you start, when you start doing this stuff reg re uh, regularly, it adds up. So. Um, you know, in a perfect world, I would ask you to get a life extension doctor, uh, somebody who actually is going to help you with this and would guide you, or try to get you to go to Kronos, the Kronos Longitudinal Aging Study, where they do immense amounts of blood work, um, pretty reasonably, because it's a research study and you're just kind of subsidizing them a little bit uh, when you write them a check. So it's hard. This is, the stuff is hard, and one thing is you don't want to, you will defeat the purpose if you stress out about this, remember? So it's not about stress. It's, you know, instead of stressing about it, you just sort of view all these options as some, a lovely smorgasbord of things that could be good for your body, and pick and choose the ones that you can afford, that you have time for, and kind of nibble away at them. Um, uh, at our conference, we gave people a spread, you know, a paper called their personal plan, and every month they pick a new area, like, you know, are we going to start meditation? Are we going to look into supplements? Maybe do our blood work? You know, e even just start researching it. Because um, it is intimidating. There's just so much to cover. So, uh, but don't stress out. That's critical. Any other, any other questions? Maybe we're done. One more. Two more. Yes. I mean, it's a bit tangential to the life extension, but uh, it seems like no matter how long you live or whatever else may happen, uh, the most important thing that we could possibly do is to get real autonomy so what do you think is the most promising path to, uh, to that? I've been looking at like, the climate and all that, but I don't know if anybody's really doing anything to get there. 
The question is, how do we, uh, what's the best technical pathway to real atomically precise molecular manufacturing? Because that's when we really get control over the human body at the, at the atomic level. And um, that's a tough question, and what I do, rather than try to answer it myself, is I have conferences where I let them duke it out. Because uh, it's not my field, so um, I just, I try to get representatives of all the pathways together and let them argue it out. And I'm not sure. Can we have one more, or are we done? Okay, this has been delightful, a great audience, and may you all uh, live an extremely long time. Bye-bye.